What's up? Rhyming Gaijin. Okay, so today, well, first of all, how are you? Where are my manners? How are you doing? Uh, you enjoy your weekend? I mean, it's a Sunday night in Japan, probably Sunday morning where you are, depending on where you are. Um, you're going to church this morning. Um, you have pancakes. I miss my mom's pancakes because they were real thin and delicious. Over here, we just got these what do you call it? flapjacks whatever anyway that's not what I want to talk about um today I was walking down the street and I passed a mom a dad and a little girl the little girl was probably about six or seven years old and when we got about this close this distance like I was on the other side so when we the little girl stuck her tongue out me she stuck her tongue out at me. Mm, I think she even made the sound too. I had the headphones on. I don't know. So, you know, I, I'm thinking, did she just stick her tongue at me? And then she then says, Gaijin. Well, she didn't have such a manly voice. Says, Gaijin. It wasn't so cute. Gaijin. Yeah, kind of like that. So then I turn around and she's like pointing at me. And I'm like, well, I'll be. So I'm thinking, she must have seen my YouTube video. Because she must have been like, he doesn't speak Japanese fluently. He's been here for five years. He's just a guy. So I was like, you know what? I better hurry up and end this because it's getting out of hand. That's a true story. I'm making this up. So I came home. I did some research. And... That's where we're going to start from there. But before I start that, we need a chalkboard. So, choke them out there. I mean, excuse me. Alright, chalkboard. If you can't teach without a chalkboard, ain't that right? Alright, let's see. Alright, we got that like that. Let's hope that my chalkboard doesn't fall on me. Uh-oh, we see it falling already. Gotta use your resources. Alright, we're good. Chalkboard. Now, the only problem is I can't really write on this chalkboard. But don't worry, I'm good. Alright, so... What I want to talk to you about in continuing the, the debate, we can call it, the discussion, why Ryman Gaijin doesn't speak Japanese fluently, even though he lived in Japan for five years. Now, they have a term for that. It's called um, language acquisition. Language acquisition. And we're going to talk about that. So... I prepared a little uh, PowerPoint type slide, so bear with me. Nihango Choto Musashi, thank you, oh my Nichi. Okay, so language acquisition. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm going to read it, so hold on. Um, language acquisition is the process by which humans acquire the capacity to perceive, produce, and use words to understand and communicate. This capacity involves the picking up of diverse capacities, including syntax phonetics, and the extensive vocabulary. Alright, so I'll bring it back later, but let's just recap or paraphrase or talk about that. So, it said that, I, I just forgot what it said, actually. So, it's, there, there was a certain word in there that said communicate. Communicate. 
and it had different so I, I don't want to misquote anything so let me go back here so it's the process by which humans acquire the capacity to perceive produce and use words to understand and communicate now in this definition it's not saying that you need to be fluent it's just saying the capacity so it's it's quite possible that one can communicate without being fluent all right let's move on to the next part uh, it usually refers to the first language acquisition which is the study of infants so babies how they learn the language how we learn the language when we are growing up but there's also another term second language acquisition which deals with the acquisition of additional languages okay so what am I getting at what is the point of this so when you're born, when you're a baby, you acquire a language. But when you're older, you acquire a second language or a third language or a fourth language. But actually, just let me show you this real quick. Uh, second language acquisition, the process of which people learn a second language in addition to the first language. Now, two points, as you can see, Tommy the turtle is pointing out learning a second language is different from children learning their first language and the second point very few adults learn their second language to the level of their native tongue okay so what Tommy the turtle was pointing out is one when you're a little kid as you know, it's easy for kids to pick up languages. You just drop them anywhere in the world, they'll pick up the language like that. But it's harder for older people, like myself. But, I mean, there's a lot of research that has been done. I don't have time to explain it or paraphrase it, or you can go find it. I have a works cited page at the end, so check it out if you want. But they were saying that the idea that up until 12, which was widely thought to be the cutoff age of when people can acquire other languages. And after that, it's just difficult. It's not true. They refuted it. They said, adults do pick it up. I was just kind of joking about the other part. But it is proven that it is different from when you're a little kid. So what does that mean? Let's see here. Come to this one. All right, the process of acquisition. I just like saying it that way. There's three, input, output, and interaction. Stephen Krashen, Stephen Krashen? Sorry if I butchered his name, but he's a professor at uh, the University of Southern California. Anyway, he believes, states, said, wrote, that the level of a person's second language acquisition is closely linked to how long a person stays in a foreign country. So now I just kind of put myself into a hole because a lot of people were saying that since I've been in Japan for five years my level of Japanese should also increase just like this guy said and there you go and this is part of the debate. You need to find people who support your ideas and people who don't. So I'm, well, I've read about what he said and I guess it's possible. I guess, you know, maybe there's something wrong with me that I've been here for five years and I still don't know the language. But, go back to this one here. Also noted, large amounts of free voluntary reading have a significant positive effect on learners' vocabulary, grammar, and writing. Now I'm really digging myself in a hole. So basically, if I read manga and watched movies and actively jumped into the, actually jumped in, I jumped into the, the whole learning thing, my level would probably go like this. 
So if I were to stop right now, you're right, I was wrong. But that would be some weird video. I wouldn't make a video like that. So let us continue. All right. Now, to the whole learning a language thing, which is the whole point of this, there's individual variations. Uh, I'll read this. You can read it if it's clear enough. I'm not sure. But the strategies that people use have been broken down into two categories. Learning strategies, such as, or read as, techniques used to improve learning, such as mnemonics or using the dictionary, and communicative strategies a learner uses to convey the meaning even when she or he or it doesn't have the access to the correct form such as using proforms like thing or using nonverbal means and gestures Nah, but something like that. So, they're now saying that there's two, so now it's breaking off. There's two different ways of learning. One is to learn, to learn. I'm going to learn to speak fluently. I'm going to learn to speak the language and communicate and get on with life. Or, I mean, you could use them together. There's no one or the other. I'm sure people use them both. Or, you use other means of communicating so for example if you didn't know the word for left in Japanese would what what options do you have you can write it down but that wouldn't help you because you're writing in English and they would well, say we're in Japan they're looking for hiragana katakana or kanji you can keep saying left until they get what you mean, left, 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 but it's the language thing. They, you can hold up your left hand. That would work. You can point left. You can turn your face left, right? And that's also communicating. And at, to this end, you would be able to get from point A to point B without using the words and I mean you're gonna have to research this because as I said I'm but if you were to continue to do this kind of pattern so instead of learning the word for left you just go left you hold your left hand up you you do all this stuff at some point you are able to oh, what's the word I'm looking for you're able to substitute the need to know the word when you can always get it so basically if you're able to get what you need to get using the methods that you use then the emphasis or the desire or the need to do it another way are significantly reduced do you follow that all right so let me go back over here okay now another page of individual variations it's good to note that we're all different that's a good thing I'm glad there's no other rhyming gaijins because there's only one only one rhyme gaijin a lot of rappers a lot of gaijins the one rhyming gaijin so, on this list, and there's more, but this list right here, some of the things that affect how well a person will do when it comes to studying a language, acquiring the language, and all that, here's a list. So, attitude. Yeah, if you have an attitude like, I'm not going to learn Japanese or Italian or English or Spanish or whatever the language may be, that's really going to set you back from learning it from someone who's like, I love whatever language it may be. They get up and go to sleep. I mean, I love rhyming. I wear it on my shirts. Imagine if I didn't love rhyming. Then I wouldn't have made the shirts. My whole life would have been different. I would have a shirt saying I love cake 
or something like that, you know? All right, next one, gender. You know, girls and boys have different ways of seeing things, you know? That's it. Community views. Uh, that's an interesting one. Um, in my community back in the States, growing up, I didn't have many Japanese friends. I didn't have any. And none of my friends were into Japanese things, culture. We didn't... We were... We watched Power Rangers, but we didn't connect it that it's from Jap Japan. And, you know, my family's Jamaican, so... You know, if your community was different, say you lived next to a little Asia, a little Tokyo, it would affect how you feel about learning the language. Or maybe not. It, it's it's uh, crazy, you know? Anxiety. Uh, let me get back over here. Okay, so anxiety. How would that affect your learning? Mm, say you are a nervous type of person. You're all like, eh, eh, right? And you get placed in Japan. Placed as in maybe your parents move here, your spouse, husband. Some reason you have to come. Kind of like uh, um, if you saw Karate Kid, the second one, where they moved to China. I don't know why they went to China, but they went to China. And he was all like, I don't want to learn this language. Why I got? And he was all upset about it because. And then you got into the fight and did it. But a lot of those problems that came up were just the language thing. He felt comfortable being in a place where he couldn't speak, communicate. But at the same time, when, assuming you saw this, because if you didn't see it, it's going to be a dead uh, example. Well, well, we won't even use that. So basically, if you're not afraid or worried or scared of making you know, I, I, uh, I'm not worried too much about missing the last thing someone said about someone else in Japanese. I'm not interested in Japanese gossip, and I know who AKB48 is. I haven't downloaded their song, and I probably won't, unless I download it to remix it, which is an idea. Anyway, so because I'm not like worried about these external things, which goes to the next point right here. Personality. My personality is that it isn't so important to me now. It could change. Maybe next month I will have a new set of ideas in my head that will make me um, feel otherwise. But for now, nah. Okay, we're going to skip the second one. You know what it means. Motivation, intrinsic motivation. I like that one. So, intrinsic, it means inside. Uh, some people are motivated. So when I make music, it's inside. I, I, I do it for me. I just made an album. And if I sell one copy, or if I sell a million copies, which that's the goal, a million, but one copy is still good. I feel very, I feel I achieved something. And every year I make an album. I got like 10 albums. And every year I feel I did something. And every year I improve on the album. So each one is better than the next. And every year I put it somewhere. And then I, and that's what I do. I, I enjoy doing that. Some people have the same feeling about learning languages. I have friends that will, well, I'll be sitting there and they'll be talking. And I'll be like, hey, you see this kanji, what's the meaning? And they could sit there for an hour talking about a, a kanji. I mean, I don't care about what it... I mean, that's, 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 not, what, that, that's not what's interesting to me at this, at this moment. It could be. I mean, the kanji for mashu, uh, it comes from mashu ko. And since my name is Matthew and I switch it over to mashu, I wanted a cool kanji, like something like I kick your ass kanji. You know, not no flower mountain kanji so this guy he was the principal he found me a kanji and he found one for mysterious mashiko mysterious a mystery and it works because i'm a mystery i'm an enigma and it was a perfect thing so 
Um, back to where was uh, here. Motivation. If you're not motivated to learn something, it will hinder <laughs> learning it. Even if it's a natural thing for you, if you don't want to do it, you're not going to do it. So, I guess that's about it. I, that's all I prepared because, I, I don't know, I got things to do. But I thought it would be cool to, whatever. So, um, I think I'll do a whole bunch of these kind of series and just, because this is pretty huge. This is just one aspect. There's another, there's another, um, another idea or concept or theory. It's called, um, it's under behavioralism. So people learn languages based on how they are, their behavior is modified. Something like, uh, this is a, a rough example, but something like, say you are hungry and you need to eat something or you'll die. You will learn what you need to learn to eat, to live. You will learn the everything that needs to be done. Let's say you don't, it's not life or death. Then you can go without learning that. So I don't like sushi, all right? So I, I will never spend any time learning the different kinds of sushi. Because never in my, well, I can't say never, but the chances of me ever needing to know the different kinds of sushi when I don't eat sushi, and I won't go to a sushi restaurant, and I won't be rapping about sushi. So in my mind, there's a whole space that's free of sushi terms. Whereas someone who's a sushi chef, yeah, they better learn every, or they better or they're going to deal with the consequences of not knowing or making mistakes. So, something like that. But we can talk about that later. And there's a whole bunch of other things, but yeah. So, these are the citations here. Uh, I just went to Wikipedia. Good old Wikipedia. There's the link. All the stuff I was rambling about. It's not even rambling. All the stuff I was talking about are right there. Just click around and find it. And... Uh, a little snippet of the song in the beginning. There's a link right there. New album. And for all you super, 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 super Seon type students, I got some extra credit. Um, if you want to respond to me, all right, and tell me that I'm wrong or uh, I agree or maybe any type of um, assessment or comment that you have, write it in Japanese yeah now once again don't worry about how I will read it I will respond to you back in Japanese All right but uh you write it in Japanese post it on the main comment so the whole world can see your comment and you know we can go from there but that's only extra credit that's for the super seon type students everybody else you can write in English and yeah and I put this at the end, but um, I I don't even I don't know why I have to say this, but I don't appreciate and I don't tolerate and I don't care for um, people making comments that are derogatory, uh, offensive, racist towards me or my subscribers or any other passing by commenters. Um, if you have a legitimate problem with what I'm saying I don't know unsubscribe me or don't watch but if you do leave a comment and it is one of the things I just mentioned I will block you and the first guy to ever get blocked by me was uh, the one dude who wrote from his iPhone and made like these grammatical mistakes and then when someone corrected him he he actually told him to die he said I hope you burn and his whole reason was because he, he was a, uh, I don't know why I was hot. The whole reason was because he said, I was on my iPhone and uh, can I make mistakes? Yes, you can make mistakes. And I asked him, can I make mistakes? But, you know, I blocked him because he, he, it's, it's not necessary. We're all adults or we're all mature enough to use the internet and the internet.
internet's a big place, we'll encounter many different types of views and all that. Anyway, so let me show you the extra credit and I'm gonna get out of here. Rhyming peace. Nihango Choto Musa Tashi. Thank you, Omanichi. Nihango Choto Musa Tashi.